Welcome back everybody, it's Destiny Juice here. In today's video, I wanted to explain and break down my thoughts on the future of Fortnite competitive. If you guys aren't aware, recently Epic did a massive announcement that ESL is going to be taking over the third party scene of Fortnite. So instead of Dreamhack hosting some zero build lands throughout the year and then that leading up into the Esports World Cup, instead what we're going to be having is 4v4 hosted in creative versus orgs versus orgs. I cannot explain how exciting this is for you guys. There's some massive orgs who are going to be getting into Fortnite. Teams like Heretics, Carmine Corp, Zeta Division, Dignitas, who already have a roster, as well as Loud, the Brazilian team, are all going to be spending a lot of money picking up Fortnite players for the upcoming World Cup. I'm going to break down all the future lands that are going to be happening, as well as my thoughts and opinions on exactly how this is going to play out. Now, first things first, let's break down the different modes that have been released so far. The first one is Capture the Flag. If you guys have never played Capture the Flag in any other type of game, basically there's a flag in your spawn, a flag in the enemy spawn, and you need to try to capture the enemy's flag more than they capture your flag. Each half life lasts around five minutes, so each game takes around roughly 10 minutes, unless you go into overtime. And to be honest, this mode is pretty good. There's a lot of strategy that goes into it. There's a lot of utility that you need to use correctly if you want to be captured enemy flag you can't just run in and win angels you're going to get punished out and the spawns on this are a little bit longer to make up for having the advantages if you do get a kill you can push up claim space and then potentially go for a flag cap the one thing i will say about this mode it is nowhere near as good as hardpoint which we'll talk about next hardpoint is the absolute best version of this 4v4 mode it's way more dynamic there's a lot more going on there's a lot more strategy behind it and it comes for a lot closer games, as you can see from some of these clips. There's also just 10 times more like tactical depth that there is with Hardpoint compared to Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag, for the most part, just seems like you need to get win a couple angels and then use some utility to run the flag back to your spawn after you get a team wipe. However, in Hardpoint, because there's multiple different points that rotate around, sometimes you can have a bad point and you can just immediately set up well. You can get control, you can own the map, you can get spawns for the next upcoming Hardpoint. And also, from some of these Hardpoint games I'm watching, from the pros that have already played some tournaments on this there is just way more strategy that they're using things like dying so they can get their util back for the next hard point things like early rotates so they can have a really good spawn position for the next set of hard points that are going to spawn in there is a lot more depth to the hard point mode that makes it a lot more interesting to watch and you get a lot closer games a lot of the times on the capture the flag games what tends to happen is it just stalemates for a long time you're not able to get a cap because both teams are just trading back and forth and there's only a certain limit in terms of depth that you can get just from running a cut flag back and forth compared to every single second that you're in a point that is giving you an extra point and it comes down to who can get 250 first which means a lot closer games as well as a lot more intense moments so no matter what map or mode that you're playing on this esl 44 tournament you're gonna have six different specialists that you can choose from so let's go through and we'll sort of rank through them and figure out which one that you guys want to be playing depending on your skill sets if you're playing this mode the first one is assault this basically gives you siphon boost as well as an ar and a pistol and a flopper which isn't too impactful and this class to be honest i see the majority of players just avoiding it it's not super strong it can be good if you just want to go for gunfights however the majority of the time you'd much rather play something like juggernaut juggernaut gives you 100 100 so you have a 50 hp advantage on everybody else as well as you get the ak which is pretty strong as well the next class is infiltrator this is quite a weak class especially on capture the flag basically just gives you sprint boost as well as a smoke grenade but when it comes to hardpoint infiltrator is really important because of that smoke grenade in terms of just cutting off the enemy team spawn locking off their angles and forcing them to actually be using thermals if they want to do anything in the smoke grenade the infiltrator class is extremely strong but specifically only really on hardpoint i don't see too many people running this on capture the flag unless they just want to play for smokes and the next class is medic medic isn't too bad it's definitely good just for having a splash in capture the flag you can use it to quickly get a flag cap as well as it's not too bad with the guns since you get a pistol as well however i don't see too many people choosing this this is sort of one of the weaker classes along with assault most players would rather play jug or the next class engineer engineer is unbelievably good mainly because you get a burst smg which is probably the best gun in this mode the burst smg absolutely shreds as well as you get the best utility which is a shield bubble so you can actually play any angle anywhere on the map you can throw down a shield bubble you get a lot more dynamic fights with the shield bubble as well as an emp grenade the emp grenade basically cracks other people's shield hits them 80 so we'll almost crack a juggernaut as well and it is extremely good if you want to counter the enemy team's engineer when they're in a bubble engineer is probably the most important class in this mode just because that shield bubble is so clutch as well as the burst smg and normally the best player of your team will be running engineer because of how impactful it is then lastly this is probably the most divisive class so far 
is Marksman. Marksman gives you a sniper, which of course can one shot, headshot pretty much anybody. And also the sniper is just so good for getting a body shot and then quick swapping over to the pistol and you can instantly pretty much run any angel. It is obviously a really high skill class. However, the sniper is definitely extremely strong because you can pretty much one shot anybody. I'll play a clip of except just absolutely rolling through a team. And the sniper, especially you can mine it with a thermal smoke, as well as having a good infiltrate on your team to actually throw down that smoke is so strong. There's a lot of plays that you can do with that. And to be honest, this class seems like the one that's got the most impact when the player who's using it is playing well. Of course, if your teammate with sniper is running around missing all their shots, like what happens to me whenever I play, then you're not going to be doing too good. However, the sniper, if you have a good sniper that's hitting their shots, it's unbelievably strong. Now, next up is the attachments. The attachments sort of make or break this mode. If you choose bad attachments, so you took suboptimal ones, you're going to have such a disadvantage in your gunfights. The most popular ones that I see so far is just running speed mag, a hollow sight, as well as a laser and a muzzle break just so you have less recoil to help you win most of your gunfights. Then on your swap weapon, wherever it is, pretty much your long range weapon, you're going to be using a thermal. So a lot of the classes you'll be using a thermal AR along with a pistol that doesn't have a thermal on it just so you have a bit of an advantage when it comes to hitting those shots through smokes if you need to. The thermal is just also absolutely broken because it allows you to shoot people's feet in a lot of situations. There's a lot of spots on the map where you can easily get shots and damage on people that they wouldn't expect just because you're using a thermal and because of how strong it is. This video is sponsored by Exit Lag. If you guys haven't heard of Exit Lag before or tried it out for yourself, it is the best way of reducing your ping, fixing any lag issues, as well as stopping packet loss. You get the best connection for any type of server that you're playing on through their custom routing experiences. So you basically have zero lag and smooth gameplay the whole time. If you're a comp player and your ping is impacting your performance, let's say you're getting wall taken the whole time, you can't go ahead and fight to your full potential, or you're constantly getting shot through builds, then definitely give Exit Lag a try. Especially if you're playing on NA Central, Exit Lag is the biggest help. Because all the servers are now done through Texas, unless you're living directly there on zero ping, Exit Lag is the best way of getting custom routing so you have the least delay possible. And the best part about Exit Lag is you actually get a free trial if you want to go ahead and experience it for yourself and experience the benefits. If you enjoy it, then there's a limited time, subscribe for two months and you get a whole month free, as well as the best offer they have going is 44% off for a whole year of subscriptions. You have a zero ping, the best input delay for an entire year, 44% off. Check out the link down below if you're interested. Now, how do these games actually play out so far? And is it actually interesting to watch for the potential future of comp. So so far, there's been a couple tournaments ran on different regions. The EU tournament was won by the full Danish trio of Refsguard, Fredoxy, Thomas HD, and Hellfire, who pretty much just are the best team on a U. They win the majority of their angels. They're obviously all insanely good aimers, and they definitely have a lot of team play that goes into these wins that they're getting. Then over on NA, the win was taken by Muzz, Reitz, and Trashy and Rituals, who are obviously all very good aimers. And these guys have a lot more depth of strategy they're using. There's a lot more advanced things that they're doing in terms of cutting off teams, knowing where the spawns are, doing lurk plays a lot of the time as well as well as just knowing how the map control actually plays into winning the game rather than just running around focusing on winning in angels. And to be honest, this mode is 10 times better to watch than zero build. If you guys have watched any zero build recently, if you watched, let's say, a zero build win finals, the victory cup finals, the games are absolutely horrendous. There's almost no action because you immediately get punished for taking a fight. As soon as you do take a fight, people are shockwaving around. There's bunker spam going on. There's bubbles that are just horrendous to watch. And it really isn't enjoyable. To be honest, I haven't enjoyed watching Zero Build for at least over a year now. And I really do not enjoy playing Zero Build just because of how little skill there is sometimes in actually winning fights. People just tend to shockwave away and there's just not that much skill going into it. Compared to this mode, this mode is all about your movement, how good your crosshair placement is, how good you are actually winning with angels, being confident in your fighting, as well as having teamwork and then good strategy behind it, such as when to use your utility, when to get spawn control, when to take mid control. There's a lot more depth that goes into these tournaments that prevents bad players from doing good. If you are bad at this mode, which is what I've experienced so far, you are going to get absolutely rolled by good players because of how far the skill gap is in just winning a 1v1 angel using movement as well as using crosshair placement in Fortnite. So why is this the future of competitive? Well, this May, there's an online qualifier hosted in DreamHack Dallas. Unfortunately, however, it's not been announced at the time of recording. However, as you can see here, there is an Esports World Cup qualifier. There is definitely going to be slots giving up. And this is in the 4v4 mode. However, the page is not currently live. And the key thing that these qualifiers are going to lead for, and also the online qualifiers with 250k prize pool, are going to be leading up to is this esports world cup 
60 million in pricing and this is shared across 20 different games but it is still an unbelievable amount of pricing so far the rumored fortnite price pool is 250k for the qualifiers to all the qualifiers leading up to the esports world cup and then 750k for the overall teams that do best in the land tournament then there's also a 50k mvp bonus so that goes to whichever player plays the best and the key reason why all of these orgs are getting involved that i talked about earlier is that there is a massive org bonus so whichever orgs have the best performance overall are going to get an even bigger prize than that 750k we just talked about and this is across all the different games so these massive orgs like loud like zeta like heretics they are trying to pick up a fortnite roster so they're going to pick up four free agents ideally and go ahead and sign them for the esports world cup and however well those players perform will go into their total points for getting that massive org prize ball this is why it is so important it's not just the fact that there's a 250k online qualifier as well as the land qualifier that's coming up this month as well as the esports world cup it's the fact that all of this is going to lead to so many more orgs joining fortnite to sign players for this upcoming tournament